it is an absolute pleasure to have uh, with me one of the most dynamic um, young gallerists from our country who runs a program called Experimenter. The gallery's name is Experimenter, based in Calcutta, uh, which he runs with his with his uh, lovely wife uh, Priyanka. Uh, the gallery is now twelve years old. Uh, correct, Pratik? Yeah, that's right. And uh, your program has expanded. I remember you started with, I think, three artists. Now you have 21 artists on board. Um, yeah. It's been a remarkable journey that, uh, that has many massive accomplishments that we'll discuss over the, over the course of the next hour or so. Um, you have two spaces currently in Calcutta. Um, yeah. And I think a, a very interesting way to describe Experimenter as it's grown over this past decade is an organization that has multiple arms that uh, sort of spread out in various directions. It goes well beyond what one would expect or imagine a gallery to be. Uh, right. you know, I, think, I think that in itself is unique, uh, not merely in the Indian context, but also in the global context. Um, I find the fact that you're, you're able to drive this program out of a city like Calcutta, you know, I mean, the cosmopolitans like Delhi and Bombay, one would imagine would be more conducive to that kind of a, a thought process. So I'm actually also very interested in understanding the geography and the role that it plays in it, whether it's sort of helped in, in some manner. But Pratik, let's start at the very beginning. You know, why don't you, why don't you uh, give me an insight into uh, how you managed to find your way into this world of art? Um, firstly, thank you very much for having me, Arvind. It's lovely to speak to you and thank you for thinking of uh, experiment and Priyanka need me to talk to you about us. Um, hopefully, we'll touch upon some of the wonderful accolades that you've introduced me with. Um, so, I um, entered the art world uh, in the other direction, the reverse direction. I um, was a consultant uh, for um, more modern and more established artists before I uh, envisaged the, the gallery program. Right. Um, and this uh, journey was really, uh, and I know Arvind since then, um, and this journey is as much as a professional journey as it is a personal journey because um, when, uh, when I was working as a consultant to um, uh, it kind of it was exciting to me to meet artists who were living and working at the current moment, um, because for, for me, somehow they were reflective of the times we are in. Um, and then I kind of gave up the, um, the consulting aspect of my thing and Priyanka and I started this gallery together um, without m much, uh, but just a vision for what we wanted to do. It was, um, it was a, it was, uh, kind of a risk. We were young and we uh, felt that we could take this risk. Um, and um, But we had a very a specific idea of what we wanted to do. And that's how it uh, began. Um, yeah. And, and then onwards, it's always, it's been like a, a steep learning curve. Um, and hopefully we've been able to kind of um, don different hats at the same time and not at different times. And it's possible to do this by thinking of um, ourselves almost like an organ, orga, organism rather than an organization. Uh, octopus. Like a, like Multiple octopus. tentacles. <laughs> Multiple tentacles, yeah. I've, we've said that we've spoken about this before. Um, and uh, an octopus is um, an, a highly intelligent animal. Yes, yes. Um, multiple tentacles. Uh, each one has its own role and each one uh, has its own um, own importance and one is not, the, the octopus is not entirely complete without its ten, its eight uh, tentacles. Yes. Um, but keeping that analogy aside, I think it's, um, everything happens centrally in a way for us, centrally in the, in the, in the mind. Uh, but we are all about decentralization. So we we actively pursue uh, uh, non-centers in a way. Right. Um, and that makes um, uh, a reason why, that's kind of a reason why we are in Kolkata. I mean, of course we are born here and uh, both our, like our families are here and yes. we studied here. 
But apart from that, I think you had an interesting observation about running this kind of a program out of Calcutta. Um, it is a it is a city that allows for discussion and debate. Um, yes, and uh, it's a city that has uh, an exciting audience. Um, it may not have um, a very active um, collector profile, uh, but sure. in today's world. Um, we don't, I mean, you don't have to be restricted by geography. Even our program is not restricted by geography either. Yes. Uh, as a result of which, you know, this um, time that people are spending at, um, in their own cities and working and trying to make their work happen um, uh, like from a remote distance or kind of connecting with people from outside. We've been doing this for 12 years already. We have, we've been really working away from the centers for so many years. Yes. Um, and it's an enjoyable aspect uh, of our uh, work. And yes. we really enjoy it. That's how we came into this, the, the art world. And um, Kolkata has a very special place for us. And I of course, um, Pratik, uh, yeah. just going back to the initiation. Now, as I understand, your family had a gallery of some sort. Uh, is that correct? No, so, so basically my uh, my parents run ran still run um, a fifty year old handloom textile business, which is which is a, an iconic name within yeah, the city. Yeah, iconic. So. Yeah, it's a very iconic name, uh, and it's it's kind of um, kind of the forebearer of uh, or, or not forebearer. It's kind of the kind of um, it becomes a very important aspect of the cultural milieu of the city uh, because everything is handmade everything is hand processed so they had you uh, you know for those visiting calcutta uh, pratik men who want to gift their their wives and and you know girlfriends something and and for all the ladies obviously could you tell us the yeah. name and where it's located yeah, yeah of course uh, it's called kanishka it's named after my brother uh, he was the first born right. uh, and my parents uh, ran this business and still run this business uh, my my mom runs it now and we help her and they do everything themselves. And there are also things that men can buy for themselves. So women can also do <laughs> women. So it's, it, it, it's a good, so yeah, it should come here. It's, it's, yes, yes, uh, absolutely. We looked at our first gallery uh, behind that space because my father very kindly allowed me to use uh, this space. And uh, it became an important, um, I mean, of course, with the rent, because he said, you cannot, uh, you cannot run a, a space on its own without understanding what rent means. Of course. So it was important. It was an important lesson. And lessons I think, in business. Uh, yeah, yeah, very important. Um, and uh, Priyanka and I had both had corporate careers before this, and we quit that. And I started my. Uh, I joined this um, family business uh, before I started uh, a craft gallery uh, right. called Gallery Connectors, which was actually an extension of our. Um, handloom and textiles business um, and they felt that craft I and mean, they've been collecting craft for many years because their weavers are all in different parts of India and right. um, and I think um, and because it was called Gallery Kanishkas I had I started meeting artists who would come and present their works right um, and and kind of le learned what I didn't want to do um, in those <laughs> <laughs> those, <laughs> through those uh, exhibitions uh, or whatever programming I had done at that time. So right. by the time I knew uh, what I wanted to do, experiment it was a very crystallized idea in uh, my mind. Uh, and I would talk about it nonstop with Priyanka, like two o'clock at night, three o'clock, whatever, any time of the day. Right. And she was at the time working with Procter & Gamble, uh, heading the media function there. Uh, right. She was media manager for the country in Bombay. And I would speak about it all the time. And then she said, if you like to do it, so why don't you try it? And, uh, and I said, I don't think this, I have a vision for this program, but I don't, I'm not so sure if I'll be able to sustain it. Um, so she said, no, let, let me, let's both do it. Maybe we can both do it together and sustain it. And then so that's the risk which, and she quit her very successful career. And uh, we started the gallery together in 2009. Right. And so she so quit to Nate and we traveled a bit before we joined the Sartre Gallery. Right. Um, now, as I understand, both of you all are far removed personalities, you know, in terms of what you all bring to the table. And I can understand why that partnership is so successful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, how much balance do you think 
the right brain and left brain function play in this equation because one part is having a creative insight you know understanding what kind of a program you want to build and the other part is the is the sensibility the acumen of being able to actually run it successfully so uh, mm. how much of uh, experimental success would you attribute to either side is it a 50-50 or uh, i mean i am having this conversation with you prateek so that i can get uh, a sense of exactly how you uh, sort of envision this sure no so if you would ask me this question um maybe 8 10 years ago we could have said we could have i could have clearly demarcated out um, a certain kind of a 50 50 or 60 40 or whatever sure because um, i think um, i clearly initiated the idea uh, and priyanka really is extraordinary when it comes to strategy um, she really thinks she knows how to think things uh, out we kind of think about the future which i think about program i still think about we both think about programmatically now but i would probably think about more at that time so uh, at that time it was quite easily divisible but as time grew we now are completely enmeshed our roles are completely enmeshed so there's not uh, one thing that one person does we do everything right. but uh, together and um, and even that's how also um, our team uh, works as well we don't have specific jobs for specific people unlike most organizations we work on a uh, like a co table everyone sits around the la- one large table and we take decisions collectively it helps us to that's where the head of the octopus comes in from everyone has their own um strengths and areas of interest and we try and um uh, uh work around um, that uh, and but we all take decisions collectively so it it feels uh very um kind of uh un it's very uh, amoebic in a way kind of very organic right. uh, rather than um very uh, structural in that sense all right um so um at the mo- at the balance is very important i mean uh, from both between me and priyanka of course the balance is uh, i mean uh, is very important we need to have that balance constantly tested it gets tested all the time as well because we we are constantly trying to juggle many things and with, especially with so many different initiatives um, yes um, there are leads to be taken and there are uh, follow backs to be done so there are those kinds of um, roles are constantly being questioned yeah so uh, prateek uh, in terms of this balance obviously you know uh, the sense that i get is it's a very democratic sort of setup where you uh, and uh, priyanka maybe at the helm but you know you've got a number of voices including that of the artists who you'll manage uh, mm-hmm. who are constantly contributing to the evolution of this program it's constantly growing and it's constantly sort yeah. of shape shifting if yeah. you will, uh, with a, with a certain clear vision in mind uh, what i want to understand is i mean i'm here i'm asking a question that's coming more from a personal corner uh, my earliest uh, memory of uh, of our, of our meeting is probably about i don't know 15 16 years back where you as mm-hmm. a young collector i mean we as young uh, you know yeah, young sort of members on the scene went to a bunch of galleries looking at things you know so yeah. my my earliest instance of of recollection is you as someone who was young looking at collecting looking at sort of you know uh, buying for yourself i did not really yeah. look you as uh, as someone who would go on to become a gallerist you know uh, yeah. so uh, how how much of that still persists as a gallerist uh, are mm-hmm. you still an active collector because a number of very powerful gallerists in the world have had the malady of being their own greatest collectors you know in supporting their own program uh, and sort of resulting in a number of great works going into their own collection does that does that still sort of persist with you do you end up looking at a work of an artist who you are promoting and saying listen this is too good for me to give away i must own this um and actually it's a very interesting question because um because actually we we end up not keeping anything for i mean we we do end up keeping things for ourselves but the most important works we always end up uh, placing um uh, because sure. i think we we uh, and it's a very interesting um, i mean you were touched upon two or three very important aspects in this in this question one is about how artists uh, are constantly contributing to our way of thinking sure. and how much of uh, a voice artists also have in our program 
uh, and um, and so the conversations that we have with our artists is um, is across many different kinds of um, um, what do we say planes uh, to make it simple. So when we talk about work, um, we are always or work of a particular artist or artist or when we try to exhibit something, it's always extremely important for us to be able to find homes for that work for the right. artist, which. Uh, adds to the artist's career uh, in a very significant way. So uh, there are conversations that we have with collectors that go uh, on over a long period of time uh, that end up culminating in a placement of a work of an artist. Um, right. uh, so when those kinds of, those are responsibilities that we uh, take um, from on behalf of the artist. So it's uh, and and as consequently, we rarely keep um, very significant works for ourselves, although we understand how important it is um, for the, uh, uh, I mean, it's important, more important for us to actually place that work significantly than to keep it within our uh, collection. We, okay. uh, of course, um, buy works uh, of art from our artists, uh, from their shows, um, rarely ever from uh, them without an exhibition or not like I, I wouldn't buy from the studio like from them they produce for an exhibition and we understand the context of um, of that um, and we maybe buy one work at most uh, sometimes we, we don't even able some of the artists we uh, some of our artists we really uh, who uh, I mean a lot of the collectors want uh, works of we don't even have uh, anything significant. So um, it's also, um, uh, I mean, it's all we're also pursuing it. Uh, there's always a fair democracy in which this um, this operates. Um, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And uh, honestly, uh, very early on, uh, we didn't we didn't have uh, the funds to buy our own artist works. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had to we had to um, grow. Um, our own uh, finances to be able to buy them. Um, right. And we, of course, uh, yeah, we are always very aware of that uh, aspect of uh, what pricing is. Pricing is a very important idea. Um, sure. Um, so yeah, and artists play a very large role in our conversation, our daily conversations, um, and many things in the gallery are influenced by the vision of our artists. Uh, I mean, which is not necessarily exhibition related, but some of them are like thoughts or, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, that brings me uh, to the next question, you know, and uh, this is something that uh, I've, I've strangely never discussed with you. The name itself, Experimental. Mm. Now, you know, um, mm. it sets the tone very clearly. It establishes yeah. exactly uh, what you have in mind. You know, you're, you're clearly yeah. looking at uh, entering a lab of some sort. You're looking at, yeah. uh, you know, uh, pushing the boundaries, really sort of redefining yeah. the bar as it stands. So, uh, mm that sets into tone the program that you'll have created. And if you look at some of the artists who you have on board, you know, the longest standing ones, Naeem, Bani, um, even the younger ones, like a Prabhakar, um, mm -hmm. tell us about Experimenter, you know, I mean, I, I, I'd like for you to dwell upon that's, you know, that, that, that birth of an idea, which you speak of, you know, having extended conversations with Priyanka about at three in the morning. Uh, yeah. Tell us about what you were thinking about when Experimenter was birthing, you know, what was it that you wanted to introduce to the world? And mm. the artists, you know, who came on board, like the opening three, let's, let's get a yeah. set of that, you know, stroke of the midnight hour. <laughs> okay, so it's an interesting, uh, again, you have very interesting questions. I must, uh, I must congratulate you. <laughs> I, uh, I like these. these like, so, so yeah, you're right. Experimenter sets the tone for, um, for the kind of programming we do. Um, we, as you said, are not afraid to test boundaries or uh, push limits or uh, think of how uh, works um, can be seen in different ways. Um, even the way we uh, envision our spaces or uh, all of that. But, um, Experimenter is also um, an idea that um, allows you to um, test things, um, uh, but also makes us think of how uh, 
in a in a lab you don't always have successes you have failures sure. failures absolutely yes to build from what you learn from those failures to um, finally do try something that uh, allow you to then build on something else sure um an experimenter is really that it's almost like an incubator um it it is a, a receptacle for uh, testing new ideas. Uh, it's also uh, the core bed of experimenter is um, self-reflection, um, and um, and we are also thinking of how um, uh, the program holds a mirror to society um, to uh, kind of think of how it reflects the time that we are in. Um, right. These are very important to. Because if you're talking about contemporary art, uh, it has to be contemporary. So it has to be about the now. Um, sure. And all the artists um, that we work with, uh, I mean, there are a few exceptions. Talk about the now, but even in those exceptions, there is a certain nowness in it. So we'll come to that at a certain point. But um, the now is reflected um, in very challenging medium sometimes in uh, in uh, ideas that can. Uh, fail or can even be misunderstood. But the uh, idea of experimenter when it came to us uh, at that I moment mean, when it kind of when I thought about it, um, came from the thought that uh, experiment has to a play has to be a place for uh, fearlessness. Um, nice. uh, you, you're not yeah, you have to create a sense of uh, openness, uh, an acceptability, uh, uh, a space for dialogue. Uh, or a space for dissent, for, for example. Uh, our entire programming for the last year has been about dissent. Um, and we don't talk, talk about it, uh, like we don't write about it, um, but if, if you look at our exhibitions, uh, they all have um, a certain form of dissent encoded in them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, and you know, our book is, our annual book is just almost ready. It's, our first copy is coming today. Uh, and when you, when you and you'll get obviously you get I hope you get one every year when you get one um, you'll be through the pages and you'll see that uh, the, the idea of descent is um, you can see it uh, envisioning itself. Right. But uh, apart from all that, uh, I think the uh, experimenter is really uh, and that's what allows us to even do beyond what we do uh, as a traditional role of a gallery. We play. The role of an institution in many ways, not just in our city, but in our whole ecosystem, primarily because we don't have the infrastructure that um, a developed art market has. Uh, the, the support sure. of the government in many side, in many ways, um, a very we don't have a very diverse collect collector base. Uh, we have an expanding collector base, but we have, don't have a very diverse one. Um, but we have to do many things beyond the core exhibitions program. Sure. Which is our learnings program, our curators hubs, all of that. So uh, we can talk about that whenever we come to it. But yeah, sure. Um, so I, I I understand that. Also, very quickly, who came up with the name? Uh, I would like to say I came up with the name entirely, but I think mostly it was Priyanka just popped it one day. Like, why do you want it? Right. Why can't it be like this? Like a space for like a laboratory where we do experiments. So why can't we call it experimenter? Like as a person who experiments. I said, yeah, is there even a word like that? Then we look up. There is actually a word like that. So we said, oh, this, this sounds good. And that's how it started. Yeah. So, so Pratik, one thing is one thing is firmly proven. It's always the vibes who come up with the better ideas. It's uh, uh, definitely uh, <laughs> true. So uh, I think. So. And, uh, no, but I really feel that women are much more intelligent than men. We just no question it. about it. No, absolutely no question or contention there. No, there's no contention. So, <laughs> so uh, there is just yeah. We we don't even have to have a conversation on it. Just both we are both of us are clear about that. No, I just so, wanted clarity that experimenter came from her. That's all I wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah, on record. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, you you know touching upon. Again, when I think about this in a, in, a, in a neutral manner, I don't personally think an experiment would have flourished in the way that it has. And maybe I'm wrong here, and please correct me if I do. I somehow think Calcutta has played a very important role in this, you know, yeah. somehow in just being away from these, these financial and, and slightly postured places like Delhi and Bombay, which come with their own nuances, which obviously contribute to the ecosystem. I think being away from this, from this 
chaos and din in some capacity has contributed to the manner in which this has evolved now is that yeah. is that observation correct or am i sort of you are absolutely right. correct um, i mean we both uh, priyanka and i are kind of uh, both kind of mostly we like to be away from a lot of the so we are mostly private private people um, and calcutta has really helped us to be at least to some extent that um and we do our um it's a bit away from everything else in a way um and it's helped us uh, to think of ourselves also also calcutta mix it's a it's a if i mean you you know calcutta uh, it's a i wouldn't say it's a it's not a post industrial place but it's a post economic city it's a city that has uh, had history of leading yes. economics in a certain way and then suddenly everything went kaput uh, so that uh, is interesting because um but it's and it's also um, i also always said that calcutta is one of the uh, few places in the world that are uh, that's so porous uh, that allows for things to come in right uh, maybe it's because we are people of the delta we allow a lot of things to go through us uh, and i think i like to think of it very macro so that's very macro so that's a, that's, a, that's a great uh, yeah it's like almost like a deltaic um, landscape uh, things just flow in from the river and then you just they just stay back in the silt uh, in the alluvial right. soil and then everything else moves into the sea right. so we um, and it's calcutta has been an ancient trade route it's had its own yes colonial history it has its, it has a, a very interesting opium trade uh, spot uh, it has been it's the center of tea um and we have jute we have all kinds of things that connects us to the world sure uh, of course the the ganges and the you know all of that but um it what it does is that it uh, the culture of the of the, the people who inhabit the city uh, plays a very large role in how our role in the city also evolves uh, as right. a result of which when we do exhibitions in the city that uh, there is a certain receptivity that we can expect to see um, right. and there's also certain rejection uh, as a, in the way that people are uh, unassuming uh, people are also uh, unafraid uh, there are no um, hierarchies uh, that way and there are many more people who are not necessarily got anything to do with the art world to come into the exhibitions to see our show so right. i would have a blue collared work uh, worker who comes every every time the a show opens i would we would have um uh, we would walk into the earlier galleries i mean the, the first space uh, often at times um uh, seeing the the tea seller across the street come, selling come, coming to deliver to uh, you know those earthen pots of tea to two visitors uh, who have who had the tea outside and then they said oh can you send it inside so he would bring it in and use an opportunity to discuss what was on on, on the video that's beautiful that's wonderful uh, to those those two guys uh, and there's a rax media collective video playing superbly conceptual talking language and then this guys suddenly speaks about uh, about about a film by the the tea, the tea seller it's filmed by ritvik ghatak or uh, the and then they have gone through a conversation incredible so that kind of uh, that's yeah, fascinating incredible that's a fascinating moment it is and uh, you walk into the space uh, and you know i'm not i'm not you know i'm just dressed in a t-shirt and, and jeans and then uh, the the one of the visitors says that you know i think i have seen this is another occasion uh, i've seen this video three times or i'm going to see it for the fourth time is it possible to get a cup of tea uh, and i very nicely oblige and i go back and get him a cup of tea and he says, says thank you and he continues to watch it and then uh, just leaves the cup there and leaves so uh so this this uh, this culture that you know you you are not uh, broken by the white cube uh, or there's not as a kind of a um, hindrance as a the white cube as a hindrance sure uh, is something that we are aware of and we need to also uh, break it um, absolutely so we do think that allow us to break that absolutely uh, so pratik you know the point that you make here is very important i think the idea of of, uh, of the role that we all play within this ecosystem yeah um requires as much of an intervention towards making it democratic in whatever manner it is possible you know i think right. the degree yeah. of intimidation that comes by way of the art world um you know uh, 
a large number of Indians have not grown up with art around them. You know, I think you had the privilege of, um, you know, coming into this world in in a family that was connected with the crafts that had a connect, which is why, you know, that level of democracy existed in your mind when you thought about this as a potential career option, even you know. So, uh, yeah. so I think I think the fact that you you use the word porous, you know, the fact that you've been able to create an uh, an institution that has a porous sort of uh, front, which allows mm-hmm. people of all walks to walk in. And I think, of course, you know, the geography, the fact that this is Calcutta and that there is um, a certain amount of intellectual, um, you know, bearings in the DNA already, yeah. which give already. you an edge over the rest of us. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, I think that contributes. Not my DNA. <laughs> it's probably the whole city's DNA. <laughs> All the same, all the same. Uh, I think culture is is something that you'll wear on your sleeve. You know, Calcutans and and and, and Bengal as a state yeah. has that edge. So uh, so salute uh, on on that front. Um, can you tell me a little about your programming? How do you go about uh, your programming and your artists? Mm-hmm. How do you select your artists? You know, mm-hmm. uh, what is the thought process? I mean, I know initially it would have been fairly simple. You had these three artists who you loved, had a conversation with, and it you know sort of went from there. But but just walk me through that little detail for everyone who's listening. Sure. Um, so exhibitions program is usually thought of about a minimum of two to three years in advance. There are right. of course some changes that some you know you can't always plan so much ahead in time. But so we have enough time to prepare for our shows um, because then we plan with artists to, um, to to do their work and there is a they go back and forth to studio visits we do studio visits they come over to uh, to see the space and how they can intervene in the space etc um, that is something that is an iterative process every gallery has their own ways of navigating yes um with regards to how we um, follow artists or uh, grow our program in that sense uh, how artists are added to our program um i've often um uh, thought about this it's like going on a date <laughs> okay it's exactly like going on a date so you like someone from afar and maybe that person likes you i'm serious <laughs> i've broken this down and really? you then uh, you then speak uh, or try to speak and then you essentially uh, go out on the first few furtive dates which basically is like you know you take the lady out to drink a cup of coffee somewhere um, and then you strike a conversation and then and that's how um, you know what you like and what the other person likes and whether there can be a possibility of this date going forward oh. and uh, then you slowly get into a relationship um, and that's how it starts uh, I'm just putting it say simply yeah clearly. Uh, and at times it doesn't work I mean you just say oh you know, I talk French, you speak German, French, German, sometimes they speak to each other in Basel, but you know, it doesn't work always. So that's how it works. But um, a lot of it, on a serious note, a lot of it actually comes back to uh, conversations and uh, having to find each other's interests. Uh, I think uh, there's a certain sense um, that we establish over a period of time about uh, the likes and dislikes uh, that we share with each other. Um, then we also uh, we eat together. Uh, I think food is a very strong aspect yes, of our. Yes, of course. Uh, and food is um, uh, makes us kind of we are comfortable and we eat. We share a meal. We do things together. And uh, we also um, uh, we also read um, sometimes uh, if the artist has written something or. Even uh, I would I in my studio visits uh, are quite weird because I sometimes I'm just looking at not not I've finished speaking to the artist I'm not leaving because I'm looking at the artist library or what books they're reading or what have they been reading currently or what they what their interests like because that gives me an insight into their interests um, uh, and what music they listen to. Um, no no not not the kind of. Uh, let's see what they're doing, but uh, mostly getting a peek into the minds of the artists. Yeah, it's mostly about trying to find a common ground, uh, find a sure. yeah, kind of a a way to think about um, what binds us. Um, and sure. sometimes we make friendships. So the friendships, uh, relationships are essentially a friendship, trust, 
uh, um, artists are like our families. We can leave our kids with them, and we be, we know that they'll be they'll be fine. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's like that. So yeah, that's how we add them to our program. Right, very interesting. Uh, uh, Pratik, now I know this next question might uh, lead to a uh, a bit of a cliche response saying, you know, how do I find my favorites? But of all mm. the, you know, of all the shows that you put forward, you know, the ones that you put, which are the ones that you're the most proudest of, uh, you know, which you personally, I mean, forget about what the market said and what collectors felt, but what are the few shows uh, of all that you put together? And this could, this could also include, you know, some amongst the, the international programming that you'll have shown. Uh, which are the ones that stand out as personal favorites? I want, I want you know, the the viewers to get a sense from a visual perspective of what uh, gets you ticking. Uh, I think, I mean, I know it's cliche, but and, and you'd expect a cliche response. But honestly, we don't put out anything out there which we're not comfortable by ourselves. Like in terms of right. not comfortable, not in the sense that okay, I you know this is, but not we are not uh, say fully into it by ourselves. Like we are into right. the exhibit, we're into the work. We know everything about the work. We are totally aware of what's happening in that show at that time and why the artist is choosing this over that or why the, this work is being shown over the other work. Right. And this is, um, so essentially we, we love like everything that we put out and we kind of, we would hate, we, we never actually, we just, we won't do it. We will just push it to a later date if we don't, we're not happy with something that right. Uh, but that's part of the of the of the of how we work. But um, I think there have been a few exhibitions that um, um, that have challenged us uh, in many ways as well right. to understand um, and also push ourselves out of our own uh, zones of comfort, which is something that we actually do every time uh, we uh, install exhibitions. Right. Um, but I mean, no, I can't really call out, maybe I can't even call out like, okay, these are three favorite exhibitions. This is, it's not about favorite, it's really about um, some exhibitions are impactful that stay with you for longer. Sure. But every exhibition is um, important and 100% us uh, in, all our, in all our ways. Sure. Uh, so it's very difficult for us to me to pin down a particular exhibition over another. One example I can give is um, two years ago, we had done an exhibition called Drawn from Practice. Right. Um, uh, which was an exhibition um, which questioned the idea of drawing, uh, but completely broke what a drawing could be. But drawing is not necessarily drawing, putting pencil to paper and trying to sketch something out, which is fine, which is also drawing. Sure. But drawing as a structure or, or a kind of um, a scaffolding, a framework of ideas that mm -hmm. eventually lead to something else. That was a really challenging exhibition because we broke all ideas of what, uh, what we were showing. So we were showing um, text and interviews uh, or uh, lecture demonstrations by TM Krishna, who was breaking how he thinks about music, the right. structural idea of breaking a traditional Carnatic music. We had Padmini Chetur's um, sound, uh, like performance notations uh, and how she would do a performance. We right. had uh, Badal Sarkar's archival videos of how he would organize this group uh, ideas of questioning theater. Right. Uh, and we juxtaposed it with our artists um, who, whose works were what we were showing essentially were um, formative works that led to other works or works of what, how you think about, um, about, about work itself. Um, um, then there was this one loom by, uh, by one loom, uh, a, a carpet, or not a carpet, I'm saying, a jacquard cloth woven by Rahul Jain in Banaras. He was he's reviving this whole uh, old uh, tradition. There's, um, there was uh, architectural uh, maquette and drawings by Bijoy Jain. So we broke the entire idea of what an art gallery should be showing. And right. We, we, use, we use performance, musician, textile, architecture, um, all of that into it. And then we juxtapose it with our artists' work. So that was something that 
was not just challenging. I think it's, that was an institutional. I mean, we have many such institutional exhibitions that we hold. Even the one that we just finished was a really institutional exhibition in that sense. Um, because then we are not just showing artists of our program, we are expanding beyond that. And it fits into the exhibition, that's why they have it. It's not necessarily that they have a commercial value. It's, it builds a certain dialogue and a certain, mm. a certain kind of interactivity with the audience. So that was, the Dawn from Practice was, a, was an interesting exhibition for us. The other exhibition was uh, last year, we, uh, the year before last, we, uh, we turned 10 and to mark that moment, we had an, uh, like an anniversary exhibition that, that was across both our spaces. Um, uh, actually, it wasn't this space. Uh, it was called um, Searching for Stars Amongst the Crescents. Uh, it's, um, it's, an, it's an interesting um, title. It's the title of a video that one of our artists, Barney, uh, made. Yes. And um, so it's really about uh, the, so it's stars and crescents. Uh, we obviously denote them to two different polarities. But there are also stars and crescents together in many. So it's just a way of different way of looking. We try to bring up, uh, try to think about how you can look at something differently, uh, think uh, of ideas that are presented or challenge how things are presented to you. Uh, yeah, uh, it was that was a very good. It was a group show. Uh, it was our anniversary exhibition, and that kind of also did, that the title really defined what we. Um, also do as galleries we search for stars amongst crescents stars mm -hmm. not as stars like stars but or superstars or you know like people but yeah. you know we are basically um, being the delta x uh, if you may sure yeah so the shows that you spoke of especially the first one mm -hmm. actually truly lives up to the experiments you know the the sort of boundary expanding uh, uh, lab tests that one conducts, you know, where That's you're right. able to go beyond what is expected. So I right. think uh, I think that was that was essentially what I was, uh, you know, working my way towards Pratik. That was what I wanted to understand. Um, so clearly, I mean, and you know, I I have been following your program closely over the past decade, and it has it has with I think each progressing year, uh, really sort of, you know, taken taken strides. Uh, in terms of just introducing things that are fascinating, that are visually uh, challenging. Um, you know, I'll be the first one to say that some of the works still don't percolate. I still don't understand them. That's because oh. I come from a slightly more conventional corner of the world, you know, and yeah. I'm very comfortable there. I reside, I reside very happily in that bracket of the, of the world. So of some parts of the conceptual, some parts of uh, uh, the, the intellectually, you know, woven pieces don't... Uh, uh, don't quite translate and perhaps for that we need to have conversations more often what i'd like to uh, discuss now are your accomplishments you know uh, beyond beyond the beyond the the sort of the visual journey that we have seen by way of programming um, you know you as i remember managed to uh, make it to art basel within what was it four years of, of initiation Art Basel, yeah. you know, to those who are listening, probably know is perhaps the most important uh, art fair in the world. And even prior to that, you'd made it to Freeze. Um, yeah. You, you know, first you, year. You, you, you went to Freeze what in 2011? What was it? 2010. So within a year of, of starting. Yeah, they asked and, us to apply. I said, we don't want to apply. And they said, and I asked a colleague in Bombay and he said, are you nuts? Uh, no one, I've been applying for many years. <laughs> they don't take us. They've asked you to apply, you must apply. So, 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 uh, yeah. so at current count, I think you must be participating about six, or maybe seven fairs actively yeah. year upon year, which results in a very blistering um, sort of travel schedule, uh, which keeps you away from Calcutta. Um, you know, mm. uh, I, I jokingly say that we end up meeting more in all these locations, you know, in mm. Dubai, in Hong Kong, in Basel, in New York, uh, more than we meet in, in India. Uh, but true. it's a good thing that these fairs yeah. exist because it has become a nucleus for the world to converge upon. Now, right. for a gallery as young as yours, you know, 10 years may seem like a long time, but in the, in the, in the global structure, 10 years is actually a blink. You know, the fact that you all have managed to create a little dent in the universe. Um, I want to get a sense of understanding uh, of the of, of the collector profile, Pratik. Now, you know, one part of the of the experimenter's stamp 
is that it is creating a democratic setup that allows for the everyman to come in, uh, you know, the, the rooted Indian, as it were, to come in and experience, understand and, you know, take away some parts of uh, contemporary art. The other part is speaking to very, very uh, sophisticated collectors who are coming from all the powerful art centers around the world, you know, uh, uh, Europe, the Americas, uh, the Far East. So uh, how does the collector profile play out in, in the experimenter uh, empire? You know, what is, what, is the, what is the divide between Indian collectors vis-a-vis international collectors? And I'm going to ask a slightly controversial question here. Yeah, uh, of course. Given a choice between a young Indian collector and a powerful international collector, you know, you see this young Indian collector who has the potential to become big. Would you would you give the leaning of an important work from an artist who, uh, you know, uh, you're you're promoting to that Indian collector vis-a-vis -vis a powerful international collector? Just give me a sense. I want to I want to understand how that part of the yeah, yeah yeah of course the good questions. Um, so let me answer the first question uh, first, and the second question, which is also a very interesting question. Uh, the first question about the pro collector profile, um, I think. Uh, we are uh, over the years we've um, developed uh, different levels of relationships with different kinds of collectors. Of course, um, and some of them are some of our. I mean, a lot of our collectors are deep collectors. They like deeply collect particular artists from our program. They followed your uh, program through the years. Yeah, and they follow the artists career through the to right. our program through the year. so they're going deep into the artist practice so some right. of them uh, have every significant work um, of the artists uh, and those collectors are usually uh, seasoned collectors that that are pursuing a particular story uh, or trying to fill in a narrative uh, of a particular artistic career which is uh, kind of an evolved, um, and there are uh, wonderful examples within our country as well as abroad, and uh, and they not they are not necessarily always coming from centers of uh, art uh, like like powerful art centers themselves because sure. their collection makes them powerful. So we would sure. we do a lot of uh, like travel to collectors um, where we sit. Uh, and spend time like we spend time with our artists we spend like three days sometimes in the collector's home and we just for the first like whatever we're not even talking about our art we probably talk about art all the time but we're talking about art from our program at all for example sure. um, nothing from i mean and we may even not have talked about anything from our artist program we're sure. just talking about because of art we talk about all the time so <laughs> it's uh and, but then come it takes a level of interaction or a level of um familiarity to be able to come to that relationship, which is something we really enjoy. So we make the journey with our collector as well. As the collector uh, expands uh, in his scope or her scope of uh, looking at work, at looking at uh, what is happening around uh, their own collection, uh, we also be, are part of that journey. So uh, at the moment, I think um, our collector base is 50 50 we have at least half uh, of our uh, things are abroad it right. of course comes from this extensive travel and uh, relationships that we've built over the years um but um we have like brilliant supporters within our country as well that have been with us from the very beginning and are crucial pillars of our um of our programming uh, and we share very um, like really wonderful uh, friendships uh, with our collectors um, and so when we um, place the works with them it's not really about uh, a sale made it's really about custodianship we are able to give you the custody of this work sure. that you can keep to yourself or you enjoy it or you pass it on to your family um, and or you give it back to us whenever you you know, you don't want to have it anymore. Those kinds of things always uh, happen. But uh, it's very, uh, it's it's at the core of this um, uh, relation is the relationship that we build, uh, which leads to the second part of the question, which is about whether I would uh, prefer 
to give it to a big collector um, uh, in the in the West uh, or uh, work uh, give a significant work to a young collector here. Um, there are then th this question can be answered in two ways. Uh, um, one is um, what again coming back to what we I was telling you earlier about about how we think of the artist at the core of uh, everything that's happening. Sure. Um, and it's how important, uh, what is the importance of this work to the artist and, and, uh, and how would it be best represented in, uh, in the artist's uh, career as well, the, the right. collection of this work. Um, it sometimes happens that large institutions um, um, have followed artists' uh, careers over time and would like to add in key things into their sure. um, into their collections that they've missed out in the past. Um, so we some of that we actively pursue. So we know, uh, for example, we have conversations with chief curators of museums about what they would want from our program, and and they also have like long timelines of you know their budgets and approvals and blah, blah, all of that. Um, and so we pursue those things. Sometimes conversations with institutions uh, take over three years or four years. Sure. Anyway. Um, and uh, especially with difficult work, et cetera. But there have also been wonderful conversations with young collectors in India, which we have actively pursued um, and grown with over the years and have favored them over um, Western institutions or Western private collectors for sure. Because sure. I think well, the story in India is a very important story to be said right now. Um, and, um, and we want to be part of that story. Uh, we want to be uh, able to build a, um, a world-class uh, homegrown um, collector base. That is something that we are very aware of and very, um, very actively um, pursue. Um, and so if there was a question of wanting to place a work with um, um, an initiated uh, uh, collector, uh, uh, someone who has many works and would want to add one work uh, versus a young collector who's starting out and is, uh, and you know, again, there's a conversation, there are again conversations that we have with these people um, and who's wanting to build a collection over, over a period of time and who's, who seems committed to be able to do that, we, we prefer to place it here um, uh, than necessarily abroad. Um, at the same time, um, and we've really enjoyed those conversations. We've, sure. we've, we've, we've grown with those collectors ourselves, uh, and they've grown as well over time. And it's wonderful to have make that journey together. So, um, yeah, so it's a bit of both in a way. If you, if you think that sure. way. So, Pratik, the reason I, I asked you that question is because it's very clear, you know, when one looks at experimenters' various harms, mm -hmm. Uh, that fostering, uh, uh, you know, the homegrown uh, is very, very important to you, uh, to you and the program, you know, to get to the gallery at large. If I look at everything from the curator's hub to uh, outpost to lab to, you know, these various initiatives that are underway, including the, the, the learning modules that you, you know, you introduced, what was that, uh, two years back? Or has it been a yeah. year, year and a half? ELP. Yeah. Um, it's a learning program. Really coming from a space of wanting to cultivate, um, you know, uh, yeah. interest in the arts. Um, that is yeah. that. I mean, I would not tie it down to a geography. We live in a time where, you know, as we as we've just discussed, you could be sitting in Calcutta and running a very successfully, uh, very very successful global program. But I think yeah. all of this is rooted in the fact that you want to build uh, a strong base for mm -hmm. India within India. Yeah. Um, very important yeah so so tell so, us a little about for instance curators hub was something that you started what again now 10 years ago uh, yeah it just turned 10 last year yeah um, so so, yeah, so so it's so let me start for this this is a very important aspect of our thinking um this many of many of these arms that we are talking about so the curators hub um started as a 
best for stable conversation honestly uh, between priyanka and me and we we have we were we were coming back from one of those you know 10 years ago when we were still like you know, you know we trying to discover things and see things more than um and then we um, came across um, i mean we met we meet curators and and you know museum curators and in, like independent curators all over the world um and we were discussing on a sunday morning after we had come back from one of those trips that you know there should be some kind of a you know dialogue that uh, allows for us to really revisit exhibitions that uh, curators do sure um, it's an important aspect of our uh, of exhibition history and we should uh, do something about it. um so we said yeah sure we should but maybe the, there should be some government conference or something and then we looked at each other and said you know we know going to ever going to have that right in our <laughs> lifetime so let's try and see what we can do and that's really just that's what so we said let's just call 10 people um then young curators we knew at that time because we ourselves would, did not have the access to you know which is why it was called the young curators hub the first edition was called the young curators hub <laughs> the and then we decided we realized very quickly that age has got nothing to do with uh, sure sure with anything uh so uh, now then since second year it started being called experiment curators hub so the young curators hub uh, was really a phone call and these friends who said yeah sure uh, as a gc we don't know how to we, we can i don't know if we can pay you to just just bring people together we will find a way to come we will find a way to uh, do this uh and um so it was very important uh, as a lesson for us to learn about collaboration and collaboration becomes a very essential part of our thinking uh we we collaborated very early on with um, foreign partners such as the Royal Helvetia or the or the Goethe Institute or the Japan Foundation or British Council sure uh, or Australia Council for the Arts these guys mm. have been long term partners have supported the uh, because they are also interested in in ex- in spreading learning so learning um uh, and conversation is a very important aspect of our program um, and that eventually So the curators hub is where people with curators we now over the years we've had some of the foremost minds of you know contemporary art come visit us um and it's really a hub in the sense that it it is not a conference it's not a um, it's not a symposium it's not a lecture it's not a uh, one on one it's really a hub it's and the architecture of that old space the earlier space allows that uh, hub to be an intimate uh intense gathering of people sure uh, as a result of which we even we, we people have asked us uh, often that why don't you you know do it in delhi or bombay or you know another country for the matter mm-hmm. because it won't suffice but this year for example we did it online uh, sure. because we couldn't meet and we would be completely i mean it, it requires you to be huddled in a closed room <laughs> for like three days four days and this not for the work and it, it unleashed the powers of the online space because you then had people from all over the world i mean people all over the world come but you know the numbers of the demographics changed completely and we've been streaming this live uh now for many years uh and that be- the i think before zoom years um or before we knew of zoom uh, we used to live stream it on facebook or youtube or live whatever uh and we would have people joining us from all parts of the world um but i think um i think curators hub led us to think about what and then we realized very early on that there was a huge uh, kind of a gap between the want to learn and the what is available to learn to people right um, and so the learning program really was birthed out of that um, that idea uh, as a result of which we also then became uh, extremely aware of what we could do with our learning program Uh, so we started doing the uh, the the modules the learning modules which are really um trying to invite someone who's uh, who has a, a vision for a straight short module maybe 5 days or 6 days or 7 days um and make it available very democratically so the the fees for a learning program for 5 days is just 2500 rupees for example it's just a right anyone any student anyone who wants to join can join it's not even like 30 dollars or whatever 40 dollars sure. um uh, and so the idea was not to make it um make it uh, something that becomes uh, a revenue thing for it it's just a, it's just a token thing but also um if the idea is to be able to grow this um dialogue into a learning like a, an idea of learning and being able to um you know the 
structures of learning and dissemination of information is something that we are also very acutely aware of and how that structure of information needs to uh, break um, in a way to be able to expand um, its true potential. I mean, here now we're talking about really philosophical fundamental ideas of what experimenter uh, is about. Uh, and maybe uh, we can come back to the conversation. Uh, then uh, with, for example, Generator, which is something that we launched uh, yes. as part of experimental labs uh, earlier in 2020. Uh, so early in the, during the pandemic in March, when we all went into lockdown, uh, we realized that uh, we would not be able to open our spaces uh, very soon. And then our team, which uh, we work collaboratively so closely, we really feel felt at that time that we need to do something to acknowledge our role in the ecosystem uh, right. or to kind of, there was a responsibility that we needed to take up. So uh, we really worked really hard in those, uh, those like, uh, early, early weeks of the pandemic. And I think by early April, uh, within like maybe two or three weeks, we were able to um, launch something called the Experimental Labs, which has many different uh, aspects to it. Uh, one of the, the cornerstone of the, of the labs program is something called Generator Cooperative Art Fund, Art Production Fund. Right. Um, it really, it's a, really a cooperative production fund. The reason I'm bringing it up now is when I was talking about how, uh, how information is disseminated or uh, disseminated or um, spread is because we were, I mean, this is a conversation that we've been having for many years and we've never been able to do it properly, is right. how, say, for example, art production grants are given mm -hmm. or how the politics of, you know, there's a grantee and there's a grantor and there's a kind of a power politics and someone's giving you something and then someone's accepting and receiving. It. And we wanted to break that um, entirely. The politics of that is very important to break for us because uh, especially for the art. So we, this is an idea that one of our artists, Bani Abidi, who lives in Berlin, mm -hmm. came up with uh, earlier, uh, having applied to many grants herself, et cetera. Uh, we've figured that there could be a way to help ourselves. Right. Um, where artists and friends of experimenter collaboratively create a pool of fund mm -hmm. uh, that then uh, we then just help people to connect to it. So we don't really, and we, of course, we give funds ourselves out. We match the funds, what, what people contribute to. So you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to give any, you don't have to give a large amount of money. You can give 2000 rupees or 10,000 rupees or 500 rupees. Right. And we only accept an in, intention. We don't really take the money ourselves. Uh, we're not right. a funding organization. We don't uh, do the funding. We just connect the person who needs the fund to the fund, fund, person who wants to fund something. Right. So we really become the head of the octopus to keep spreading things around. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's again comes back to the structural idea of that. But it's important because it breaks um, what we you know. There's a the we don't we don't ask people the grantees how you use the fund. They just give a report at the end of the day. Right. Um, they are also small production bursaries. They are not very. They're micro bursaries. They're not. They are like two thousand, two thousand dollars, two thousand five hundred dollars, I think, up to. Uh, and uh, they allow you to, you know, it's like a bridge. You've, you've done something. You need to complete a project. You need to take prints. Sure. You want to do a dummy for book. You want to produce your zine or whatever. Uh, um, you just apply to it, and it's a rolling thing. Is there's no beginning or an end to it. You just apply whenever you want to, and we try and. Put it all together like maybe you know um, and we originally thought we'll give, we'll do it once a year but then we got so many interesting applications we did it twice already in six months and i think our next one will should be in april um and so we've we've really gone all out and helped artists to and they're meant obviously meant for artists not represented by us um right. it's not for our artists it's really about others outside uh, we, we were also acutely aware that a lot of artists don't have gallery representations uh, and they're really in a state of flux and redu in an environment with reduced opportunities, reduced, um, you know, projects being postponed or, you know, canceled. And, um, and that really puts a large amount of uh, pressure. Uh, I mean, we've had artists who, who've said we want to just travel and use this fund for research. It's fine. Um, right. um, so that's, that's, so, so those kind of things. Then we have the labs, uh, which has the uh, you know the our black box program, which is a digital uh, digital, pro digital digital art project. The entire project is digital. It's online. Uh, it's that first one's going to be up soon. You know the the filament, which is an online film program, 
uh, we're right. showing very important films by artists yeah, for a short period of time online. There are, there are other initiatives of the labs that um, that become uh, crucial in the way of thinking. So, yeah, of course, yeah. Hmm. So clearly, more than eight tentacles here. They're 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 they're, they're found. This is this is an octopus that has uh, that has more than the conventional. Yeah. Um, Experimental octopus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pratik, I uh, like to, you know, move on to understanding how this past year, 2020, has kept mm -hmm. us all grounded. You know, we've all been indoors, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a first of many years. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. in the past 10 right. years, 15 years, I can't think of a single year that um, kept a program such as yours, um, you know, uh, relegated to this, this one space. How is that translated into a implications on programming, uh, mm. interactions with your artists, and very importantly, interactions with uh, the community? You know, your your patrons, uh, viewing as well as uh, collecting. So, mm -hmm. give me a sense of that. Okay, so uh, 2020 has been a very interesting year. I mean, of right. course, it's been a year um, uh, that has kind of taken away a lot from everybody in different ways. Yes. Um, uh, personally, professionally, in all kinds of ways. But it's also been a year where it has taught us incredible lessons of resilience, um, yes. of, of humility, of kindness, and also of not taking many things for granted that you know, get used to things, taking things. You yes, can take absolutely. a flight, you go anywhere you want to. Correct. You can walk around publicly without worrying about what the other person thinks, uh, stuff like that. You know, but you know, we, we, um, we, the year has been a year of lessons. So, um, as I was saying, um, we've had some kind of a, we've had the, I, it's a privilege, the good fortune of being able to run a program such as ours already from afar, from, from a non-center specific uh, thing. So, so we knew how to communicate um, uh, quite early on. And um, our digital initiatives, uh, our, um, our online viewing rooms, and that's what everyone's uh, done as well, because there's no other way to show the work yes. of your artist, um, honestly, to, to physical exhibitions, to in-person exhibitions, as we call it. Um, and that we we had to really up our, um, you know, our learnings on that. So it's also been a huge learning curve. This Zoom, for example, uh, sure. I'm very te technologically challenged generally, but uh, kind of, I do many zooms. Actually, I was doing one last evening. I was doing so. For example, the curator, the uh, the learning program is a is a juniors program. We, have a, we we spoke about where we don't have we don't grow up with art. So yesterday, for example, I was leading um, a walkthrough of our a very political, a very kind of a, a very almost kind of a, a difficult exhibition really um, by Sorab Hura. We just ended that exhibition last right. week, but we kept it on with these kids from class 11, 12. Um, of, of a school in Calcutta wanted to do a uh, digital work through which uh, I typically lead. And so I was doing that yesterday. So, and that's right. yesterday, yesterday. And right. then, uh, or oh, no, uh, written early, five, oh, no, earlier, uh, 5 p.m. yesterday. Um, and uh, that's that's something that I do all the time. So for example, the, the digital the digital space has really exploded in that sense. There's also, in fact, there's been, I think there is a lot of noise in that space as well. There's so much happening and you just oh. think that I'm, not, I'm just gonna switch off. Um, uh, so we've, of course, had that aspect going, being acutely aware that we may be also adding to the noise. We've, we've embraced that change um, uh, quite seamlessly, in fact. If right. That is, um, the, um, the collector interactions actually have been quite interesting. Uh, you know, we meet so many of our collectors, um, mostly at art fairs, um, yes. where we are really uh, have a little window of time where we, uh, you know, we speak about the work, we speak about an artist, we speak about personal things within like five minutes. Sure. Uh, and then the person is gone and we see him again or her again later. And, you know, we're in touch on mail, blah, blah. But the pandemic actually forced everyone to stay in, indoors. So we had incredibly long, beautiful conversations with, our, with collectors over periods of days uh, where we would you know, spend time just chatting about works that they wanted to see. Sure. Uh, if we, we would make um, PDFs specific to that art uh, collector and then 
um, on our like, like we are speaking now, there will be uh, are my team members sitting on, on across me, which they are all, all of them sitting right right around <laughs> me right now, uh, sharing um, PDFs that were made specifically for the collectors, and uh, and it would be wonderful because it would just be iterative. Uh, um, and they would they should share on on share screen PDF while you talk about it, and the person would say they go back go forth, and that would be uh, that was great. We we did some really wonderful ones. Those really uh, those really were nice, uh, and a lot of the times those conversations would just talk about everything else other than the art, but would still allow us to do things that way. It helped us um, to connect with our collectors in a different way. Uh, sure. We didn't meet any of them uh, physically. We uh, spoke to a lot of them on the phone, etc. But um, there were quite a few that we actually did these digital walkthroughs or you know, presentations, things that they missed out or they want to have no more about. Or sometimes they don't have the time to um, kind of spend time understanding an, an artist we've just signed up their practice but uh, you know it helps us to deep dive into that conversation as well sure. no i hear you so this you know 2020 has been fascinating for pretty much everyone across the board uh, uh, yeah. the challenges notwithstanding obviously you know there's been there's been tremendous learnings for everyone you know even for yeah, you said so too when we spoke yeah uh, at a personal you level, I mean, you know, when I, when I, uh, I mean, rather at a professional level, when I look at what we managed at Artery India, uh, there were so many plans that were sitting on paper, um, you know, that one just did mm -hmm. not have the opportunity to get around looking at, you know, uh, and the manner in which yeah. there has been an expansion of, of various ideas into, into execution mode. I think that has been something that um, everyone, all the colleagues that I speak to, you know, uh, they've managed to uh, yeah. have some wins along the way because of that. Um, Pratik, at the moment where we stand right now, you know, what's your vision for 2021? Where do you see the experimental ship sailing? So I think the experimental ship is set a sail already for 2021. It's gone. It's like on <laughs> steaming ahead uh, without adding to any global warming. Um, um, so, so, uh, so I think uh, we are... Um, well into 2021, uh, we have um, a very exciting year coming up for us. We have Fantastic. Uh, um, many exhibitions, like we have, right? We, over, we have a wonderful new exhibition opening, like a really gorgeous exhibition opening on the 22nd next weekend uh, right. at our Sun Road space. Um, uh, it's called Nestled. It's a beautiful conversation between uh, Adib Datta and Meera Mukherjee, one artist uh, who's more, and Adib Datta, who, used, who grew up as a young boy uh, or a young teenager in Meera Mukherjee's studio. So, literally, she um, was like, like his everything in a way. So, he kind of, the conversations that he's not really spoken of in, like, in his, through his work, but when That's you look at his work now, you see the influences and the way his, he's looked at his world around him in the way that she has and the kind of relationships that she had with her crafts, like uh, her, her, like she, she was very interested in Indian crafts and how Indian, yes. um, Indian processes are constantly evolving in her work and Adip's work, way of looking at um, her work and also his own work, the way. So it's, it's really a dialogue between two artists, um, an artist in absence and an artist who's uh, looking at this conversation now, 20 years or 25 years past her passing, or whatever, 20 years past her passing. So it's uh, it's a very it's a very fascinating exhibition. So we have, uh, and it's the entry of Mia Mukherjee also uh, into the exhibition is through her hand embroidered textiles um, uh, that have a, like even a visceral physical appearance with Adib's drawings, which are incredible. And Adib is a sculptor and shows yes, which of course. main work is sculpture, and then. It's very, it's a very, very interesting exhibition that opens next month. We have a solo by Aisha Sultana, who's based in Dhaka and New York, opening at the end of uh, this month as well. Right. Um, uh, and and if things go as oh sorry, or maybe it's not early next Feb, in Feb, on the weekend of six seventh, if things go as per plan. Uh, and but there, of course, the sea, and then then we have um, a whole lot of other things happening. Um, as well, uh, we've um, also got we have our, our colleagues in uh, the rest of the country. Uh, we've gotten together with them to create this online platform. 
and as well as we're doing to do something on site as well uh, in Delhi, maybe in March. Um, right. So I'll let you know about that. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Uh, so and then 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 there are the fairs, which uh, other than Dubai, which seems like it's quite certain that it's going to go away because Dubai is more or less um, has got itself figured out pandemic wise. Others other fairs are a bit uncertain. Um, and uh, but then there are, then we have to program for them and we have to see as it comes. But I, I sit on the com committee for Art Basel and I know that they're trying all their whatever they can to ensure that it's safety and, and all of that is ensured that if they right. do the fair, the first the, the core thing is about the safety of the visitors. So it's tough to do those decisions at this moment sitting here uh, sure. and sitting as in sitting it's time to make those decisions. But yeah, those. Those, uh, so we have our slew of six fairs already lined up. Uh, none of the that we participate in uh, have really announced any cancellations. Um, I mean, of course, India Art Fair is not happening this year. It was a decision taken last year as well. But all of that is happening. And then our artists have some very important exhibitions lined up uh, all through the every all parts of the world. One of our artists, uh, Prabhakar Patkite, for example, has nominated to Artist Mundi. Uh, which is a premier prize, uh, of course, prize in the UK, which exhibition, the exhibition, the shipments left last week and the exhibition opens in Cardiff uh, very soon. Um, then, you know, Naim Mohammed has many important exhibitions lined up, you know, Sweden, this, and all museum shows lined up. There's there's a lot happening on that front. So Rav uh, has, is part of, currently part of a very important exhibition at the MoMA uh, called New Photography, which happens every two, three years. Which introduces, um, which has been historically known as introducing uh, very important photographers to the, I mean, uh, institutionally introducing important photographers yes. uh, into into the conversation. So there are many 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 things happening. Biraj Dodia, who's a young artist, we show she um, she's going to go to Italy to a very important um, residency, Chivitella Foundation, Ranieri, uh, Chivitella Ranieri Foundation in. Uh, uh, in I think Torino, not in Torino, in you know, uh, at, at the end of this year. So it's 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 a very important, busy year for us uh, as well. Um, so we'll see. We have a lot happening, um, and then the online viewing rooms are of course uh, in this beating away on the side. <laughs> they're around. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. So that's happening. Right. Um, so that's wonderful, um, uh, Pratik. Um, you know, clearly going to be a robust year ahead. Yeah, at mm. various levels, you know, hopefully it'll allow for um, physical interaction to come back into the, into the, really? yeah, you know, that's that. something that I, I know we all are clamoring mm. for, mm. but, um, but here's wishing you more success. You know, I, uh, I, I think, I think, I think this conversation has been, has been enlightening in more ways than one and, um, and congratulations mm. on, on all your achievements and all your accomplishments and here's to Thank many, you. many more. Thank you. I have one question for you. Yes, yes, please. How are you taking care of those amazing suits that you wear? <laughs> I, I don't I know. That I'm maybe wearing them at home. I don't know. <laughs> you know, initially when the year started off, uh, um, I'm sorry, when the lockdown started, I made it a routine to get dressed, uh, even if I was coming down to my basement. Uh, yeah, I know your basement. Somewhere, somewhere along the way, it sort of wore off. You know, the, I, I, I started dressing down as you as you as you're seeing me right now, this has become this has become work from uh, home mode. Yeah. Uh, I have my I have all my suits steamed very religiously, so they're they're they're, they're sort of looked after. I have like a conservation cell. I, I mean, more than the artworks that I own, I think my suits have more. <laughs> of course, of course. So, uh, and yeah, so, I used to a friend of mine who was also equally crazy about suits. I remember you guys really bonded well on your suits. Yes, yes, of course, Imran. Um, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm just hoping, um, Pratik, that 2021 allows me to wear some of those suits and for us to hang out, uh, you know, at yeah. uh, at, at some art event somewhere. Will. I'm sure. I'm sure it will. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me over and thank you for spending so much time. On Not at all, uh, Pratik. Um, you know, I'm in fact, in fact, just as a, as a as a sort of teaser, I'm going to invite Priyanka on a separate conversation. Now that we have had the, you know, one part of the brain speak, I'm going to have the other larger part speak. Yeah, please, please, please give a fair please, warning. A lot more careful things to listen to her. So. <laughs> Great. Okay. Super. Thank you. Thank you, Pratik. Thank you so much. Thanks.